greatly to be praised. Glory, glory to his God name. is great. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is great. God is great and greatly to be praised. Yeah. Glory, glory to his God name. is great. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. God is great. God yeah, is great and hands. greatly yeah. to be praised. Glory, glory to his God name. Is great. God is great and greatly to be praised. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Yes, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Yes, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Yes, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. Yes, you don't know like I know what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about what he's done for me. I get happy when I think about. What is done for me? I get happy when I think about what is done for me. I get happy when I think about what is done for me. That's what he's done. 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 I won't forget. That's what he's done. I can't forget. That's what he's done. He picked me up. That's what he's done. Turn me around. That's what he's done. He placed my feet. That's what he's done. On solid ground. That's what he's done. He's been my rock. That's what he's done. He's been my shield. That's what he's done. He's been my wheel. That's what he's done. In the middle of the wheel. That's what he's done. I got to give him praise. That's what he's done. I got to give him glory. That's what he's done. I got to testify. That's what he's done. You ought to shout for joy. That's what he's done. You ought to stop the feet. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. That's what he's done. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come hey, to do. I don't know what you come 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 to do. I didn't come to look at you. 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 I didn't come to hey, look at you. I come to pat my head. Oh, hey. 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 I come to do my day. 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 Oh, hey. I come to lift him up. Him up. 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 I come to leap for joy. For joy. I come to leap for joy. For joy.
Hallelujah. 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 The song says, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. We come to clap our hands. We come to open up our mouth. And we come to give him praise today. Because he's been so good to us. He's been good better than we've been to ourselves. He's made ways out of no way. When we didn't even know which ways they were going to be made, he made the way. So we come to glorify God today. Can we stand and go before the Lord in prayer? Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. God, you are an on time God. God, you are a God that never fails. You are merciful, God, and we thank you for it, God. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the latter rain, God. We thank you. We thank you for laying us down last night and rising us up this morning. With activity with our limbs and our right mind, God, we thank you. Somebody laid down last night, but they didn't get a chance to get up. But you gave us one more chance, so we ought to give you glory. You gave us another chance, so we ought to magnify you. We give you the glory for it, oh God. We thank you for a roof over our head. We thank you for food on the table. We thank you, God, because you are good, God. We thank you, God, when we ain't even good to ourselves. You yet forgive us, and you yet forgive us, and you yet hold us up. So we thank you for it, oh God. We thank you for your goodness, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy, oh God. We ask you to sing your anointed in the house. Just see your anointing, break every yoke, uh, break every chain, uh, break every stronghold uh, that come against your people. We ask you to remove it, oh God. Uh, and we ask you to put a spirit of love and a sound mind in the house. Uh, put a spirit of rejoicing in here. We give you the glory today, God. Hallelujah. Uh, you've been so good, God. Uh, you yet keep on healing and deliverance, oh God. Uh, you yet healing our families. Uh, you yet healing our church members, oh God. Uh, so we give you the glory for it, oh God. God. We give you the glory today, God, for healing power. We give you the glory today, God, for deliverance power, for victory power, for way making power. We thank you for it, oh God. We thank you, God. We thank you today, God. We come to thank you, God. We come to thank you, God. We come to thank you, God. We ask you to do it, oh God. Heal and deliver. Heal sickness. Heal the firmities, O oh God. Heal diseases, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, O oh God. We ask you to do it today, God. We ask you to make preaching easy here today, God. Anoint our pastor, O oh God. Anoint him the fresh, O oh God. When you stand up to open up his mouth, God, you give him a word for the people, O oh God. You use him for your glory, O oh God. Bless the choir, God. Every song that they sang, God, you get the glory, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank thank you for it oh god we thank you god we ask you to have your way god heal and deliver oh god we ask you to go in the hospitals oh god and continue to heal go in the nursing homes and rehab centers oh god heal and deliver oh god heal lift up the bereaved hearts oh god in the name of jesus we ask you to do it satan you a liar and we bind you in the name of jesus every confused spirit every hindered spirit we cast you out in the name of Jesus. You a liar today, and you don't get no victory. We give you the glory, God. We tear down the walls of the devil, and we build up your kingdom today, God. We ask you, God, somebody might come in with a broken heart, God, but when they leave here, God, let them leave here chained and delivered. Let them leave here lifted up, oh God. Let them leave here rejoicing in your name, God, and we are yet give you the glory, God. Every name that's on the sick list, God, every name that's not on the sick list, God. We thank you for the healing, God. We thank you for delivering them, oh God. We thank you for raising them up, oh God. We thank you for bringing them back in your house, oh God. And we give you the glory today, God. You are on time, God. And we worship you. And we magnify you. And we say thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God praise? Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll be reading in your hearing Psalm 24, verses 5 through 10. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. 
This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. Amen. Let us read our affirmation of faith. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We affirm our faith in... We believe in, oh, oh, excuse me. We affirm our faith in God. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in repentance and salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We affirm our faith in sanctification. Amen. Can we give God some praise in here as the choir comes? <clears throat> Can we magnify God because he's a good God? I'm a soldier yes. on the battlefield, and I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. Yes. I promised him I yes. will serve him till I die. I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. I had heartaches and pain, yes. sunshine and rain, but I'm fighting, fighting for the Lord. I've been up and I've been down, yeah. but I never turn around, cause I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. If I just hold down, yeah. hold down, hold down, hold down, then I know I'll get my crown. I'm a soldier on the battlefield, and I'm fighting. I promised him I yeah. will serve him till I die. Yeah. I'm fighting, fighting for the Lord. I've been up and I've been down, yeah. but I never turn around, cause I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. If I just hold down, right. hold down, hold down, hold down, help me say,
seven till I die. I promise hey, him hey, 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 hey. seven till I die. All right. I promise him hey. but seven till I die. I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. Hey. I'm on, I'm on the I'm fighting, say, fighting for the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the time that we all can pay a part. Can this, this is tithes time, so we ask asking all tithers to come at this time as we prepare and position ourselves for what God has blessed us with. And this is the time that we give him back what he's, he deserves. So we call in all tithers. And he asks for ten percent. So he give us, we given God ten percent because he's been, he's been faithful to us. He's been good to us. So we're gonna bless him. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for what you blessed us with, God, in our earnings and our finances, God. So we thank you for that, and we come to bless you of half which you blessed us with and we we just ask you to continue to bless us and we thank you for opening up the windows and pouring out blessings over us oh god so we just give you the glory and the honor in jesus name thank god amen everyone to our service today. We want to especially welcome our guests who are joining us um, this morning. Um, if we have any guests, would you mind standing? <laughs> Let's give these two guests a round of applause. God bless you. We thank you for joining us today. You are welcome, and as we said, you're our guests. So you have a special place of in the House of Prayer family today. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. We are so thankful that we, all, that we are back in the sanctuary, and we thank everyone for their cooperation during these almost three years of where we had to wear masks and, and hand sanitizer and temperatures. We thank each of you for your cooperation. As you see, there's been a lessening of the guidelines, and you wearing your mask is optional at this time. They will continue to take uh, pictures at the door. We Thanks, Sister Shireen and Mother White for their faithfulness every Sunday, right? <laughs> God bless you both. Um, we are thankful to everyone who made a pledge to our basement project. As you can see, the work has begun and is continuing, but we need your participation. We need your help to get this basement finished and completed. Oh. 
Amen. And everyone has a value in this project. So please, whatever you can give, we appreciate it. And we, the more of us to give, the quicker we can get this done. And we want to thank everyone who came and participated, who worked on last Saturday's brunch. It was a success, as you can see all these beautiful pictures that are being played. Oh my goodness, we had great food, great music, great fellowship. We had a huge um, the rally that they did, the whole raffle. Everything was just beautiful. People were leaving the place talking about they can't wait till next year. So God blessed us tremendously. We thank all those who worked. We thank Sister Ruthina for her, all her work and the beautiful cake that she made. I didn't want her to cut it. It was so pretty. Amen. And we thank our Minister Whitlock who um, continued the tradition of our Mother's Day brunch. We appreciate you. God bless you. God bless everyone who participated. Um, we want to thank everyone who came this past week to our women's, to our uh, New Garden State Jurisdiction Women's Department Women's Conference. We had a wonderful time this la those last three days. Um, the Lord really blessed, and the women came out in full force. And we thank everyone. And if you missed Friday night, you missed a blessing. Our bishop preached heaven down. Amen. <laughs> God bless each of you. Um, Pentecost Sunday is, is next Sunday, May 28th. Um, I believe everyone is asked to wear red and white that day. Um, we plan to have a great fellowship and come out with us for next Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. Our youth department will begin planning for the graduation service. Please provide your child's name, the school's name, and grade they will be graduating from so they can be included in the service. As we know, time flies, and we want everyone to begin to prepare for our pastor and bishop's anniversary, which will be July 9th. More details will be coming in the following weeks. Sunday school, our adult sessions via Zoom with Newry Temple is from 8.15 to 9. Our children's session is from 9 to 9.45. Please join our morning man of prayer Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. We are blessed every morning. This week will be um, our pastors pray, and it will be about the week leading up to Pentecost. So don't miss it. We are praying for all of our sick, our own dear Ebony Fowler, as we say every Sunday, we're expecting nothing less than a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. We are praying for Mother Carolyn Taylor and Mother Ida Mae Harris. We stand with them and believe God for their miracle. We are praying for Mother and Pop Connors and Mother Lytell. We continue to pray for Missionary Beverly Roman, Mich Sister Carolyn Taylor, Sister Yvette Whitlock, Sister Irene Caver, Sister Sherrod, Sister Coleman's granddaughter Adria, Sister Alma's son, Michael, Missionary Harrison's nephew, Tyrone, Mitchell Smith, Sister Catherine Reed, and Sister Catherine Jones, Carolyn Jones, I'm sorry, and Sister Joanne Harris, our usher extraordinaire, amen. And of course, we continue to pray for our pastor's continued health. At this time, we're going to ask our own, oh, we do have two more announcements about the men. Um, the New Garden State uh, Men's Department will be having two functions. They will be having a, um, is it a, a breakfast? They'll be having a breakfast on June 17th um, at the Church of God in Christ in Mor Morristown. And then on June 10th, they will be meeting on Route 22 to have a, a bowling event with all the men in the jurisdiction. So our men are on the move. Let's encourage them. Amen. And they're, they've invited all the churches in our jurisdiction to take part. And we're very happy that our, our men's department is going to take part in that. Amen? Um, we'll let you know of any other future announcements regarding this. God bless you. At this time, we're going to ask Minister Whitlock to come and pray for our sick. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the honor, God. We thank you for healing power. We thank you for your anointing, God. We thank you for being in the presence right now, God, wherever the saints said, wherever the saints that the names was called and the saints that the names wasn't called, God. We thank you for lifting them up, oh God, and healing their body, God. We don't have to ask you for it, God. We thank you for it, God, because you're there in their presence right now, God. 
You wherever they at, God, your angels is already there, God. Camped around them, God. Healing powers in the room, God, we thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We ask you to continue to touch their body, God, from the crown of their head, God, to the sole of their feet, oh God. Rub them with your anointing, God. Rub them with your healing power, God. And raise them up, oh God, and we give you the glory and the honor because it's already done. And we say thank God. We say thank God. Amen. Can we give God praise if you believe it? If you believe that the healing is already taking place, can we give God praise? Hallelujah. 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 At this time, the choir is going to come. And after the choir, can we stand and receive our, our own, our own pastor and bishop that God has placed on this side of the vineyard and yet keeping them here for a purpose. Can we stand and receive our own pastor and bishop, Bishop William T. Cahoon, as he comes to the pulpit?
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I am so glad that I'm not alone, that God is my everything. God is. Whatever that you want him to be to you. A lot of folk don't want him to be certain things. Some folks don't want them in their space, so to speak. How many want him in your space? God is. What a powerful, powerful song. Father, we thank you today for your blessings and for your love and for your kindness and for your tender mercies. And we thank you what you have done for us all this week long and how you have been with us in spite of everything. We're here today, but Many of us, we don't know what some of us have been through in order to be here today. Uh, what some of us have experienced over the last two weeks, last week, three weeks, whatever. But God, we are here today and God, we want to thank you. And since I'm here, I'm going to give you praise and I'm going to give you glory. I look to you by faith and God, there comes the time when I have to speak to myself. And encourage myself. Hey, glory. Because I know where you have brought me from. And what you mean to me right now. God, I thank you. Be with us today and bless us and speak to our hearts and lift our spirits. And give a word to every one of us. Minister to us individually and collectively in this house today. And God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity that you've given to us. So many people would love to have our privilege, our opportunity. Some people are making promises to you if you get me out of this. But God, we are here today to give you praise, to worship you, and to magnify your name and to thank you. Your word will speak to our hearts. Your word will lift our spirits. Your word will bring healing. Your word will bring deliverance. Your word will bring hope to me. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Help me praise him. Come on and help me thank him. You have anything to thank him for? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yes. Hey, glory. Your word, your word, your word. Bless us and be with us and encourage us. After we all shall have left this place of worship today, that we can say, it was good for me to have been there. In the name of Jesus, Lord, it takes you and the power of the Holy Spirit to touch us and to lift us and to speak to our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray before you take your seat, just give God a praise and thank him. Thank him for life. Thank him. Thank him for the man to be here. Thank him. Thank God. 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 Thank God that I'm here in Jesus' name. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May heaven smile upon you. You may be seated. God bless all of you on today. Thank you for being here on today. Thank you for having the mind to be in his house on today may god bless you and may heaven smile upon you thank you god bless you my brother good to see you sister angeli god bless your heart we prayed for you did miss you last sunday we prayed for you you spoiled us <laughs> let everybody say amen the lord bless you thank you for being here for all of you that if you would have stayed home uh, just consider praise god but you're here in Jesus' name as i said just a few minutes in my, just a few seconds in my prayer, sometimes you have to encourage yourself. 
And you have to, the song is right, speak over yourself. Yeah, because sometimes if you wait for others to encourage you, you might be waiting. But thanks be unto God that we can speak it ourselves. Am I saying right? Praise the Lord. God bless you. God love you. God keep you. We honor the Lord today in the presence of Minister Whitlock. Many are out. Some are at graduations. Praise God. And some are traveling. May God bless you. And thank God for those who let us know where they are. Amen. And some did not, uh, uh, well, get, get up in time or whatever the case. And remember, I can catch them. I'll catch them on Zoom. I'll catch them on Zoom. We need to catch you in the sanctuary. That's what we need to catch you. And to see you, praise God, in the sanctuary, in the house. You know, to let your mind go back uh, just about two, three years ago, we were in a fix. <laughs> this whole world was in a fix. But look what God has done. He has somewhat abated this virus. Now, don't let your guards down. Please, don't, don't let you. Please try to keep your guards up uh, in spite of because this thing is yet hanging around here and there, cropping up. Am I saying right? So just be watchful, praise the Lord, and protect yourself. And uh, if you did not get the vaccine, get the vaccine, get the boosters, whatever, praise God. Help yourself out and be watchful. Amen? Praise God. The Lord bless you. Thank you for participating in the fundraiser on last Saturday. Last Saturday. May God bless you and may heaven smile upon you uh, that God blessed us in our efforts. And uh, we will uh, continue to move forward in the completion of this project that we've undertaken as a church. Now, there's only, I believe, one, two, three persons in here. Uh, well, Nikki was a little girl. And uh, I don't know. I'm thinking about when they were in the building of this church, Karen. When Mary Brown, your mother, who was the church mother, and all of those, uh, that uh, this place was nothing but a little small factory building or something. It was here. They turned this, this place into what it is. And it's uh, up to you and me to keep this place intact and to keep doing what it takes to make it and to beautify it and to make it uh, uh, comfortable and to receive uh, the community. There's so many things I would like to see done in, in this basement. That's why we are remodeling it and making it nice, uh, wherein that we can minister to the community. Summer is coming up, and uh, we need to talk to people, encourage folk uh, here and there, uh, because we are living in some critical times. Do, you, do, do we really realize that these are some critical times that we are living in, critical times. But God is keeping us. I say God is keeping us. And uh, I want every person uh, to get on board with the, re God bless you, sir, uh, with the remodelization. Everybody, we need everybody to be a part and to make sacrifices, those people the, 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 the people who built this church, they were not uh, uh, engineers, and when I say that, uh, in the profession. Right. Amen. They were not school teachers and, and nothing. And, and thank God. And thank you. They were not professional people, so to speak. I hope you get what I'm saying here. Just get what I'm saying. But they were just ordinary people that loved God and had faith in God. I came here at this church right after the demise of your uh, the late Henry Pringle, uh, this man of God, servant of the Lord up here, that with his hands and with the men and women, oh yes, I would need some help up in here, that build this church with their hands, with their hands. And uh, it is for you and me to, to take and to look at what they did and to continue to carry on and to build and to uh, revive uh, this ministry. Is that right? God has given us a great privilege and opportunity. Uh, God will bless you uh, to make sacrifices in this effort. 
uh, many of us are making sacrifices in this effort. I want to thank uh, the team that for the brunch that we had on last week. That was for uh, the uh, remodelization, and there are other things that we need to do in order to complete this thing by July. I would like to ha see that this uh, completed by July. Got a lot of things to do down there. I say we're about seventy percent complete of, uh, down there, but. We got to get new uh, 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 stove, sink, and microwave, and everything modern. Hello. Yeah. Praise God. And we are people of the Lord. We are intelligent enough to know that you can't walk into these places and say, hallelujah, glory be to God. I need a stove, I need a refrigerator, and I need a freezer and walk out. And then they deliver it here. No, you go there and you order it. And you pay some money. I wish I had some help. Y'all get where I'm going? You cannot say that. You, uh, uh, all of us in here who get a PSNG, uh, public service electric and gas bill, you just wish that you can go down to their place and walk in there and say, hallelujah, I will even spin around and do a dance in there if that would pay for my bill. But it doesn't. Don't pay your bill. And public service will let you know uh, what they think about you not paying your bill. And you come home at night, you're going to be in the dark. And don't pay your water bill. And when you turn the faucet on, <laughs> you're not going to get any. I wish y'all y'all with me? There's some people of the Lord. We have wonderful people here. Sister Thelma Coleman was here. We have wonderful people in this church. And we understand where we are understanding is a listen you you if you have good understanding you're blessed matter of fact i'm going to talk about that today and talk about that how blessed you are to really have good understanding in your right mind and know who you are and what this life is all about a lot of people just have it upside down but you need to congratulate yourself and praise god that you have it upside right, <laughs> praise God, that you know where all of your blessings, not some, all of your blessings come from Almighty God. Is that right? All right, so we're going to get busy. God bless you, Brother Walter. We're going to get busy, and we're going to do our best. I am going to make great sacrifices. Uh, the husband man must be the first partaker a few of us have made great sacrifices already. No, listen, it's to the glory of who? God. And God's got a way of making ways for you that you know not. I had somebody to bless me not too long ago because of some wonderful things that I did for them years ago. Oh, Y'all not listening to me. One day I will testify and tell you what God did for me through people if you do what's right and love god and treat people right and love everybody don't have no picks don't have don't be a part of a clique in a gang no, don't 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 do that love everybody don't draw a circle and push others out you have to make people feel welcome you know i have been in my life of these 60 years of preaching God's word and supervising over 20 churches that I have been uh, made to feel that you're not wanted. It's not a good feeling. Uh, I said it's not a good feeling. You should always welcome people. Well, well, you know, come on, come on, come on. Speak and put your arm around folk and let them know we're glad to have you. Praise the Lord. As I was saying to the women, I'm going to preach. Let me preach in a few minutes. My glasses. Oh, yeah. Please excuse me. Uh, I said to the women of uh, Friday night, I said, y'all are some complex creatures, but wonderful and beautiful creatures. And if the women were to say in the church, fare you well, good. Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm leaving all women. I say to the brethren, see y'all later. I'm going with them. <laughs> They're complex. Carolyn, don't be looking like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Women are complex. 
but wonderfully, fearfully made by God. Are you listening to me? All right, y'all better be listening to me. That's not to put you down. You, you know I'm telling you the truth, women. You know that. I, was, I remember when my wife would, uh, would be pregnant with children and carrying out four children. Sometimes she's, I said, what's wrong with you, baby? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What you crying for? I don't know. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had some women that knew what I was talking about would say amen to me. Is it the truth? Yes, it is. Whether you say it or not, it's the truth. That's a part of you. That's a part of life. There's nothing on the negative side. It's all demonstrated as to who you are. In men, we are too poor communicators. But well, Waterman, we poor communicators. I thought I told you, baby. No, you didn't tell me. <laughs> Am I right? No, you didn't tell me. Right, right, but Dukes? We, we, we put, come on, Brother Omar. You send us. <laughs> we, we are poor communicators. Men are some, women, they, we are poor communicators. Right. Poor, poor. Yeah, yeah, well, yes, we are. And we acknowledge, we, not, we acknowledge that. Men need to learn how to communicate more often especially with his family, with his wife, with his children, and let them know what's on your mind. We're not mind readers. People are not mind. All right, let me, let me stop. I'll be done preaching you my sermon before I get to my sermon. <laughs> I'm going to preach to you today. Bless this word that you have given to me to share to the, with the people of God. And let the anointing of God be upon it. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Uh, from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 7. I don't know. It might be me. I'm getting a little warm up here. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You may stand. As... As far as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do you get that? Proverbs 23 and 7? Mm -hmm. Is that it? Romans 128. Turn to Romans 1 to And even as they listened to this carefully, did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Did you get that? did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Listen to this carefully. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, having strife among the people, deceit, malignity, evil-mindedness, whisperers. That's what that means. Low and low sub brotherly a voice in a brother in a voice mostly gossip. Just just gossiping, whisperers. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Deuteronomy 28, 28. Listen to this carefully. One of the intangibles of God's word that speaks to disobedience. In the 28th verse, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. That's one of the curses that God speaks and the blessings of being blessed in the book of Deuteronomy, but he said that the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness. Amen? All right, God bless you. This is enough. I'm, I'm, I'm through reading the scripture. But I go to uh, Philippians 2 and 5 to give you some direction. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. 
Jesus. Your mind is the most critical part of you, your mind. What's on your mind? A lot of times you don't have to, you can look at the way people act, talk, dress, whatever, that something is not going on to swell in the mind. Is that right? right. Keep your mind on what you are doing. Stay focused. We ought to stay focused and disciplined and intentional in all that we do. What is the mind that which thinks, feels, and wills intellect, the reason and faculty of imagination, thought? It's the dynamo, it is the power, the source of life, your mind. One of the things that God has allowed to creep in on the human family is somewhat mental disorders. That's when he said, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Astonishment of heart, confusion will come about. And so then, mental disorders much and so until it has become the number one disease in the world. One out of every four persons has a mild to severe mental ailment. More people are in hospitals right now, listen to me carefully, at any time for mental reasons and disturbances than for all other diseases combined. In industry alone, mental health programs could save billions by decreasing absenteeism, 90% caused by emotions. Now, this is nothing negative uh, to put people down in any kind of a way. If they have challenges uh, in their emotions or whatever. Today, whether you are aware of the fact or not, there is a great struggle going on a battle of ideas and a battle of words, ideologies, and we are in the midst of a gigantic warfare to capture the minds of people. The battle is in the mind, and the enemy is trying to take over the minds of people through so many avenues. Are you listening to me? This internet is a challenge to the minds of people. Do you hear what I say? It's just like uh, people keep repeating something and saying something if it's not true. After a while, people are going to believe. Just like uh, the ex-president kept saying that they've stolen the election from him. He's still saying it. Mm -hmm. And there are people that actually believe that the election was stolen from him him why and he knows better and then I'll take it back there's a possibility that he really believed that the election was stolen from him he yet saying that the election was stolen after all of the facts are y'all listening to me that have been uh, put forth and uh, the uh, in the courts everything and through actually what took place on that day that he was not re-elected as president by the votes. But he's yet saying that the election was stolen from me. And then there are people, as I said, believe that, and they are yet saying the election was stolen from him. Now we know, and thank God that we do know, <laughs> that the election was not stolen from People keep repeating stuff and saying things People believe that because it's getting into the mind. Am I right? <clears throat> How in the world, as large as China is with over a billion people in that country, that they can hold all those people's minds and yet remain in communism is because of the fact that they keep repeating and rehearsing 
and saying things to the minds of people. Are you with me? For as he thinketh, the word of the Lord said, in his heart, so is he. Let us consider, first of all, the unregenerate mind of people that are not saved. The devil is able to control the thinking of an unsaved person to the extent that he, the individual, is somewhat of a mental slave. What is going on in the mind of an individual to get a gun and go and shoot innocent people? The, this is what I'm trying to show you uh, as to what's going on in the minds of people. Every time we hear as to what's happening, we go in a really a cringe that how is it that that person can just shoot down innocent people that they don't even know. Don't, they just shoot people down is where? It's in the mind. Back in Noah's day, we note the terrible degeneracy of the human mind. And God saw, listen, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. In the New Testament, we discover the startling words in the book of Romans 1 and 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. The word reprobate means a disapproved mind. The devil not only controls the unregenerate mind, but he also torments the child of God. His greatest method is through deception. Let everybody say deception. Jesus Christ constantly warned his disciples, take heed lest thou be deceived. Deception has to do with the mind, and it means a wrong thought admitted to the mind. And the deception that it is truth, that a person believes that what that individual is saying, that it is true. I just got through saying that there are people that believe that the election was stolen from Trump. Because they've allowed that to sink into their minds and into their thoughts. Mrs. Penn Lewis, in her book, War on the Saints, lists some of the biblical examples uh, of deception. The man is deceived if he is a hearer and not a doer of the word of God. James 1 and 22. He is deceived. If he thinks himself as to be wise with the wisdom of this world in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, he is deceived when he thinks himself to be something when he is nothing. In the book of Galatians 6, 13, he is deceived by seeming to be religious when an unbridled tongue reveals his true condition. James 1, 26. He is deceived, she said, if he thinks he will sow and not reap what he sows. Do you know that there are people that believe that what they do to others, that they will not have to give an account for that? You're deceived if you believe that. Am I saying right? If you... You, let's not know that you don't know that what you do to others that is coming back on you. Right. You are deceived. Right. If you think that contact with sin will not have its effect upon you, you are deceived. The Bible said evil communications corrupts good manners. The reason the world is in such a chaotic condition is that the devil controls the main part of its thinking and even some churches also they're deceived according to the word of God the spirit of deception and thought control will be manifest 
in the last days. Dr. Smith has disclosed out of 91 occurrences in the New Testament of words meaning to deceive or to go astray, 22 of them belong definitely to passages dealing with the prophetic matters. This means that we are living in an age of deception and it will get worse. If you think it's bad, rest assured, it's going to get worse. Never in the history of my living and yours too, that the minds of people are so distorted in the times that we are living in. And if you think that what our children and you or anybody else that you look at that is not going to affect you, you are deceived. Tell the Lord thank you. So we are in a time where people are giving heed to seducing spirits hallelujah tell the lord thank you word of the lord said now the spirit speaketh expression that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils tell the lord thank you hallelujah we'll live forever People are telling folk this craziness that you're going to live forever in the flesh. You're not going to live forever in this flesh. Tell the Lord, thank you. However, we thank God that we have done what it is necessary that we will live forever through Christ, through being born again. Our lives change. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Am I saying right? Tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. And People are deceived, wherein that people tell folk that Jesus did not die for your sins. As the Muslims, they teach, you know, Jesus was a great prophet, but he did not die for our sins. I said, well, you've gone on to Jerusalem, look for the tomb that he was buried in. He's not there. But wherever Muhammad was, built, uh, was buried, he's yet there. Jesus sits well on the right hand of God the Father. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That makes him the Savior yes. of the world. We're living in a day and a time when there is a deception of false Christs and false prophets. And if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not, for there shall rise false Christs and false prophets. We are experienced in that and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before the deceptions of the Antichrist in Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 to 12. The devil's final deception in Revelation 20 Verses 7 through 10, and when the thousand years are expired. See, because in his second coming, Jesus himself is coming back. And he's going to set up the kingdom on earth. Are you listening to me? For a thousand years, the millennium reign. Let everybody say millennium reign. And the Bible said that Satan will be bound for a thousand years that we will not be able to wreak any havoc among the, the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell the Lord, thank you. But then there will be a time when he will be loosed again, and his thousand years will be up, and he will come and deceive the nations which are in the, the four quarters of the earth. Gog and Magog, together them together to battle the number of whom is at the, of the sand of the sea. The Bible warns of the deception of Satan, but it also provides the source of victory for every believer. John 8, 32 says, declares, and he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word of God informs us that Jesus Christ can control our minds. He's in our minds. He's in our spirits. Tell the Lord, thank you. And thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee 
because he trusteth in thee. The word stayed means to lean upon or take hold of. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, we discover the glorious truth that as believers, we have the mind of Christ. The apostle Paul, he sent word to the church, let this mind in Philippians be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Tell the Lord, thank you. If you please, may I present to you thought control on its highest level, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, the word of God said, every thought to the obedience of Christ. There is victory for every child of God. Let everybody say child of God. Jesus Christ is able even to control your very thoughts. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thus Paul proclaims the glorious truth for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Holy Ghost, which dwells every, in every believer, every believer that have invited him into your life. Therefore, he plays an important role in the thought life of every one of us. And he shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. How many times that you just didn't have a good feeling about some stuff? And you're feeling that down in your belly, down in your spirit, led you the right way. Do I have any witnesses in here? The Holy Ghost can be recognized uh, or he can be disregarded. How many times that you were led to go in another direction and you went in another way, you, in the direction that you were not led to go. And when you, you decided to go in that direction, are you listening to me? Direction, it was not the way that you should go. And after a while, it turned out to be that when you were led to go into another direction, that's where the Holy Spirit was leading you, not in some truth, but all truth. The Bible said that when he comes, he will lead you in all truth. But you got to listen to him. You got to keep an ear. Are you listening to me? You got to keep an ear out to hear what the Spirit have to say to you. You, I have, I'm sure that there are many of you can witness that if you would have gone in certain directions in which the way that you were being led, that you might not be here right now. But God led you into the truth. Thank God for the spirit of the living God that lives within you and in me. That Jesus spake and said that when he come, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that he would lead you into all truth. That's not to say that sometimes we make decisions. Are you listening to me? That does not really uh, is the, the best decision to make. Am I saying right? But some way, somehow, when you have good intentions, let everybody say good intentions. When you have the right spirit about a thing, uh, tell the Lord, thank you. God has a way of making up the shortage. Hallelujah. God has a way. Hallelujah. Thanks be, thanks be unto God that God knows the intentions of our heart. He knows what's on the inside of us. Thanks be unto God who leads us and guides us. Not to say that a thought is not going to come. How many thousands and thousands of thoughts enter our minds every day? I imagine you can Google it if you want to. Thousands and thousands of different thoughts enter into your mind every day. Even sometimes when you, you have a mind, the thought entered into your mind, tell her off. Tell him off. Uh, uh, oh, yes. 
I remember one time I was stopped by the policeman. I was on my way to preach, people. Did y'all understand what I said? I was on my way to preach, and he stopped me, and, and, and he asked for everything, and I, I gave it to him. And the devil whispered to my head, say, 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 tell him to give you a ticket and let you go because you're on your way to preach. But I didn't obey him. I didn't listen to what he's. I heard him, but I didn't obey him. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? And I did not do what he said to do. And by the time that he spoke those words in my ear, I kept my mouth shut. And I waited, and he looked it over and said, okay, here, you can go. Go right ahead on. Suppose I would have obeyed what I heard in my mind. I'm trying to help you here. You have to be careful as not to say everything that enters your mind. Got to be careful. Tell the Lord, thank you. Because you got to remember that the thoughts that's coming to you not necessarily coming from God. Because some of the things that people say, the Lord, God ain't told you to do nothing. It was the devil that told you to do it. Tell the Lord, thank you. So my brothers and my sisters, I'm trying to help all of us that you got to listen out for that small, still voice and that feeling down within your belly, in your spirit, in your mind. Obey and listen and do what you are led to do. He said he will lead you into all truth. Yes, we've, we've, we've gone in a direction We've done some things that we were led not to do. And we suffered. Hello, somebody in here. And you suffered the consequences. Am I saying right? Tell the Lord, thank you. God wants us to listen out for his word, his leading. There is victory for every child of God. Jesus Christ is able even to control your very thoughts if we allow him in our space. The problem is that some of us just don't want to allow him in our space, in our thoughts. Tell the Lord, thank you. Thus Paul proclaims the glorious truth. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let everybody say sound mind. How blessed you are to have a sound mind. Tell the Lord, thank you. How many, how many thankful to the Lord for a sound mind? Some folk are wishy-washy. They don't know what to say. They don't know what to do. They don't know. You know, the Bible said a double-minded man and woman is what unstable in some of their ways all of their ways you have to listen and obey tell the lord thank you well he will lead you into all truth the holy ghost he indwells every believer do i have any believers in here therefore he plays an important an important role in the thought life the Holy Ghost can be recognized or disregarded. Whatever you want to do, he's not going to break over your will. But if you listen to him, if you obey him, tell the Lord, thank you. He knows what is best for you. Do I have anybody in here that have been led by God? That he has spoken to your heart. And you know that it was nobody but God that spoke to your mind. And caused you not to make a tremendous mistake. Tell the Lord thank you. And then when we override the spirit. Hallelujah. Tell the Lord thank you. When we override the spirit. That some of us we've, we, we, we've taken it into our hands. And. And, and we did not listen. And we did not uh, take the time to somewhat digress and weigh the pros and cons. And, 
the advantages and disadvantages. I know somebody might say, yeah, but sometimes you don't have that, that time to do that. And sometimes you do have that time to think about what you are getting ready to do. How you, are you not listening to me? Tell the Lord, thank you. But if you listen closely, I am a living witness, people of God. And you are also that if you follow the leading of the Lord, if you listen to the voice of God, because I don't care what anybody say, if God lives in you, the spirit of the Lord lives in you, he will lead you, he will guide you. You, you got a problem with me because I've been with him too long. And so have many of you. You've been with him too. Don't, don't tell me that God will not speak to you. That God will not lead you. God will lead you. I preach it with conviction. If you listen to God. If you stand on his word. If you allow him to speak to you. If you let him guide you. He'll save you uh, from embarrassment. See, God knows better than you in his providential will. Now, you got to remember, remember that the omnipotence of God, the omniscience God of God, that's the all-wise uh, mind of God, and the omnipotence of God, you know what that is, right? All-powerful. Am I saying right? And the omnipresence of God, you know what that means, don't you? You mean he's present? It means that he's present everywhere at the same time. Now listen, the omniscience, the omnipotence, the omnipresence, all of that is fueled by the providential will of God for your life. Let everybody say providential will. The providential will of God. God knows. Let everybody say God knows. He knows just what to do for you. God knows just where to lead you. God knows just where to guide you. And for that cause, God uh, has not brought you thus far uh, to leave you now. Uh, if you keep on trusting, uh, keep on believing, uh, keep on looking to him, uh, look to the hills uh, from which cometh your help. Uh, your help, let everybody say, my help, my help, uh, come from the Lord. Uh, say, yeah, he lives in me. He lives in you. He want to lead you. He want to guide you. Stand to your feet, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue this text anymore. Let this mind. Come on, lay your hands. Say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mind? He wanted to please God. He lived to please God. He knew his mission. Every one of us ought to know our mission. Tell the Lord, thank you. God, I said God. God, God, almighty God. He want to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants the best for you. Say yeah. He has good thoughts towards you. Say yeah. He want to see you make it in life. Say yeah. The devil is trying to destroy you. The devil is trying to take in the wrong direction. But he's a liar. Father of lies. The Holy Spirit has come to lead you. Lead me in all truth. If you let him. He wants to work in your mind. He's going to tell you to do what's right. And tell you what to do. What not to do. Am I right? Whenever that a good thought drop in your mind. Don't argue with God. Don't reason with him. If the Lord drops something in your spirit to do things that's honorable 
and to bless people and to lift somebody and to make somebody's day, don't reason. Don't find ways to get out of that. God has dropped in your spirit. Oh, no, that wasn't the Lord. Oh, yes, it was. Anything that's going to bless somebody, and especially if they need your help, somebody, I said somebody, God's going to allow them to cross your path because you will listen to what God has to say. Say, yeah, always look to bless somebody. Always look to encourage somebody. When it drop in your spirit the first time, because you got to remember this, the devil is not going to give you anything that's good that's going to help you, not someone else. Now, he might try to put you in a trick bag. Are you listening to me? He will put you in a trick bag if you're not careful. But listen to God's word. For when the spirit of truth come, look at somebody and say, thank God. I said, thank God for the spirit of truth. He will lead you into all truth. Say it. Oh, God. Lay your hand on yourself. Thank God for the mind of Christ. Thank God for the mind of Christ. Jesus. Thank God for the mind of Christ. I'm not playing with this. Look at somebody and tell them the truth. I'm not playing with this. Christ lives in me. The hope of glory. I preached to you the other Sunday about what the hope of glory is all about. Tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Jesus exalted and revealed the love of God to the people. It is your responsibility and my responsibility to demonstrate the love of God to people. That's the glory of Christ in you. You're going to be mean and always hard to get along. Some folk don't even know whether you are saved or not. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? Tell the Lord, thank you. Look at somebody say, ain't nothing wrong with me. I got the mind of Christ. I want to live for him. I want to obey him. Say, yeah, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Christ died for you and me. And because of his redemption plan, the plan of God, the mind of Christ is in you. Don't sell yourself short. Are you listening to me? Don't sell, sell yourself short. And as I encourage people as I go here and there, be encouraged, regardless of the challenges that you have, Christ yet lives in you. Am I saying right? You don't believe it, it ain't there. You got to have faith in who? God. Tell the Lord, regardless of your challenges, repeat that after me, regardless of my challenges, he lives in me. Now, you know what? The devil wants you to believe that he's not there, but he's a liar and the father of lies. Christ lives in you and me right now. That's why we're here. Am I saying right? I want to pray. Oh, shush. Hey, glory. I want to pray for all of us. My God. People of the Lord. I am so glad that I know Jesus. You have, and so have I. We've been on the other side when we didn't know Jesus. And it was a mess. Whew. Look at somebody say, he got us out the mess. 
How many here that know that God got you out of the mess? Say yeah. When you heard his voice, say, get up, get out of here, leave this mess. You've been better off ever since you obeyed God's voice. Do I have a witness in here? Say yeah. I preach myself happy in here this morning. I got the mind of Christ. How many want to obey Christ? Want to obey the truth? You want to do what the Lord leads you to do? Tell me, huh? Glory be to God. The Lord bless you and the Lord love you. God, we thank you today for the mind of Christ. For the leading of the Holy Ghost. And that we're not laboring on us. The spirit of deception. Oh, God. So many people are laboring under the spirit of deception in these days and times that we're living in. They've allowed a lie to take root in their minds, and they believe the lie. Whew. Lord, we thank you for the spirit of truth. Everybody tell God, thank you for the spirit of truth. You ought to say it like you really mean it. Thank you for the spirit of truth. People of God, you are blessed to have the spirit of truth living in you. You're not easily led by a spirit of deception. People will deceive you in a moment's time if you listen to their stuff. Am I saying right? But when you have the mind of Christ and Christ lives in you, you can tell the Lord allows you to sense that something is not right here. I'm going to move away from this situation. Tell the Lord, thank you. Men and women, you have to be bold enough to, if you find yourselves in a situation, in a relationship with a friend, or with whoever, sometimes women befriend each other to get the confidence of each other. I wish I had some help up in here. So you can share with them your life. Don't you do it. Somebody get upset with you, the first thing they're going to do is talk about you. I wish I had some help up in here. Some things you need to keep for your own self. You don't have to share with, your, with people and other folk and your life story. God has touched you and transformed your life. As I said Friday night, he transformed my character and reconstruct my personality. I don't owe you anything but love. That's all I owe you is to love you. Is that right? Bible say, oh, no, man, nothing but love. Tell the Lord, thank you. So anytime you got to share your life story with a friend you don't need them as a friend learn to keep your own personal intimate secrets to yourself i remember when i was a, when i first got saved years ago a good old deacon robert mcleod said to me he took me he he fathered me and one of the things he said to me, dear sister, don't ever share all your secrets with anybody. Because if they fall out with you, they're going to talk about you. Some of you might have experienced that. Don't do it. Some things you need to keep to yourself. You need to keep your own secrets to yourself. Amen? Tell them to Jesus. He's your friend. Am I saying right? How blessed we are to have the mind of Christ and to be led by the Holy Ghost. Jesus said that when he come, he will lead you into all truth. People of God, I know I'm looking at some of you that God has kept you from getting wrapped up into some crazy stuff. Because his spirit led you and you had that feeling. You didn't have a good feeling about it. 
And sometimes when people go on and override the spirit, I remember one time I met sister, um, Mother Harris, if, and she, I know Mother Harris listening to me. They got her on. She said to her sister, Sister Allen, y'all remember Tommy Lee, right? She walked up to the car and said, Tommy Lee, say, Allen, you always override in the spirit. You have to be careful how you override the spirit, people of God. Be careful. Listen, he's trying to help you. Am I saying right? I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, thank you for your blessings and your love, your kindness, and for this word today. <clears throat> That we let this mind be in us, be in you, as was in Christ Jesus. To be led by the Spirit of God at all times and not allow the thoughts that come to our minds to rule us, to lead us into areas that we ought not to go. Thank you for your word for this morning. I, I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for not making some critical errors in my life. But we're bold enough to change my mind and say, no, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. I'm not going that direction. And save me shame and hurt and pain. Thank you for the leading of your spirit. Thank you for these, your people that are here today that worship in the beauty of holiness, thank you for the mind, the mind that they had to come to this house of worship. Bless, and I pray that you've given them to receive that will help them with days to come. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, thank God for Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated, those of you that are in the house. Anybody here that don't know Jesus? Don't know Jesus. In the pardon of your sins, he is our redeemer. Amen. How many glad to know that you're saved today? Save, and we give praise and thanks unto almighty God. Amen. God bless all of you. The Lord bless you. Heaven smile upon you. All right, at this time, we're going to receive, or we're going to have our communion at this time. Our communion is ready. All right. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege and for the opportunity that you have given to us to be a partaker of this that you instituted yourself, not the disciples, but you, the Lord Jesus Christ, instituted this. We pray that thou wouldest be with us and let it become a reality. Eve ate as the enemy deceived her. And eating of that which God had forbidden her not to eat and Adam. And so Jesus, before you were destroyed, so to speak, and before you went to Calvary's cross, Before they tried you and scripture give us to know that they beat you all night long and carry you from judgment hall to judgment hall. It was your passion. It was your suffering for us. But you instituted this that we will eat this. You said it was your body which is broken for you and with your stripes we are healed and you said to drink of this meat of the grape because it symbolizes the blood of the New Testament shed for the remission of sins. You bless us as we receive this on today in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, thank God, amen and amen. Let us prepare for to receive as I read to you the from the word of the Lord, the book of 1 Corinthians, praise God, and chapter 11. Amen. Uh, beginning at the <coughs> 23rd verse of that particular chapter.
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when he come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that he come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. God bless all of you. What a blessing that we have to receive of this, of the Lord. Remember, as I stated, that Eve was deceived by Satan. And she ate of the tree that God had told and given Adam explicit directions not to eat of that tree. And after she ate, remember, the whole world went into a tailspin and it took thousands of years for God to straighten it out. Let us prepare to receive this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray and ask of thee that I would bless these elements and turn them from a natural to a spiritual as we receive of them and let healing and deliverance and prosperity be our lot as we receive this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, thank God, amen. The same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he break it. And he said that this is my body which is broken for you. Take it and eat all of it in remembrance of me. And in like manner he took the cup and he blessed it after he had supped. And he said that this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. May the Lord bless all of us as we partake of this communion on today. God bless our ushers as they receive your cups. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. We can ready to go and we are going to receive our offering. And we pray that all of you have an envelope to participate in our giving and in our offering. If you need an envelope, raise your hands and the ushers will wait on you that you might give. Some of us have to prepare our envelopes like myself. Amen. And give in this offering. The word of the Lord teaches not come what? Empty handed, but come giving and blessing and sharing, and the Lord will bless us. May the Lord bless all of you on today. God bless you. All right. See, Ms. Doe, that everybody, everybody have an honor loop. All right. Let us stand at this time. Thank you for coming. May God bless you. Glad for our brother. God bless you all the way in the back there. Who's that in the back? God bless you. Glad to have you. Glad for all of you. Good to see you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let's look to the Lord. I pray that this week will be a blessed week and keep your mind on the Lord. And let him lead you and guide you. This word will come back to you.
as I speak it in your spirit, that you will be reminded to let God lead you and guide you and that you will be a blessing as you go. Father, thank you for the privilege that you have given to us and most of all for the opportunity that you blessed us. We pray that you will continue to go with us and be with us and bless us and keep us and hold us in the hollow of your hand. Bring us back at the appointed time and cover us in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God for Jesus. Amen and amen. Until we see each other again next week, Lord's willing, hopefully and prayerfully.